threats, but <laughs> I had a, a, a nun, a, uh, an Ursuline nun, right out of the world of Inorado or Chris Durang as a child. And uh, at, in the sixth grade, she used to bring in uh, uh, Puccini love duets every Friday, at much of the dismay of all my classmates. But the first time I heard Puccini <laughs> in the voice of Beniamino Gili, I loved it. And I, like at six years old, I was hooked on opera, and that was my real obsession, was opera. And I used to campaign and save money to get up to Dallas to see the opera when the Met was on tour. I grew up in Corpus Christi, which certainly didn't have an opera mm -hmm. company. And um, that's one of the reasons I probably chose Columbia, was to go to the opera. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that was my first theater, really, was opera and musical comedy. My parents were both New Yorkers, and they would come home from trips to New York once a year and leave playbills on their coffee table as a <laughs> status symbol. And, <laughs> and, uh, but, so, but from a very early age, I heard shows like Kiss Me Kate was my father's favorite. And uh, he had very good taste, I think. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty good score still. And uh, so music was always an opera and were always there, uh, very much so. I wanted to be a journalist. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess an opera critic, I probably <laughs> wanted to be. And I wrote the Varsity Show while I was at Columbia, and I thought nothing of it, you know. That, and then like a year later, I decided to write a play. And, uh, but it was quite a while before I said, oh, I'm writing plays, and I'm earning a living doing it. it was, I didn't grow up wanting to be, I wanted to be a great journalist. I wanted to write for Time Magazine, I think, was my. Not the New York Times? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get that in Texas, I wanted. <laughs> And the day I decided I truly never wanted to direct was after a very long rehearsal and technical thing. The actors came and said, should I wear the blue shoes or the red shoes? And I thought, oh, God, if someone came up to me at 2 in the morning wondering what pair of shoes to wear, I'd, I'd hit them. So I, <laughs> I said, I think I better stay. stay uh, but as an aesthetic, I, I think there's some playwrights who direct their work wonderfully, and I think there's some, director, uh, some playwrights who direct their work very poorly. But I, I just, I, I don't have that, those skills. It's hard enough to write a play. Why give yourself another 300 tons to carry on your back? Being an artist is a very courageous thing to be. But I think the main thing we do is write our plays. And I do believe if you write a good play, it will be done. It may not be done on Broadway with Nathan Lane and, you know, um, Madonna, but it will be done. And that's the important thing. And all of us have plays that have begun so modestly. Yeah. And because they had some quality and reached other people, they were eventually produced in New York. And you people have seen them, I hope, and uh, care about them enough to invite us to be on this panel. Yeah. So you've got to remember that we have to do the work first. You can't. I'm going to write this great play for you. You've got to write the play, yeah. you know. That's number one. I did have a man come up to me the other night, and he said, I, I'm, from the, I'm a middle-class man from New Jersey, and I think your language was unnecessarily raw. And I said, well, I'm sorry. Thank you for that. And this woman came and said, I'm his wife. I loved it. Don't stop. <laughs>